Joe Biden undoubtedly failed in his primetime address to the nation last night, uh, voting his speech not just on the threats to U.S. security, but he also lectured Americans on how awful we are, spending time on hate and unwarranted rage towards Islamic fundamentalists. But what's worse, he barely mentioned anything about American hostages held by Hamas or the fact that U.S. forces were attacked seven times by Islamic extremists. No mention of U.S. troops being attacked in Iraq and Syria or that missiles were launched at a Navy destroyer by Houthi forces in Yemen. This is Joe Biden's Carter moment. And while some at Fox News may praise him, it fell short of expectations. The American people deserve much more. Joining me now is counterterrorism and foreign policy expert and host of the Foreign Desk podcast, Lisa Daftari. Also here, former White House Middle East envoy Jason Greenblatt. Lisa, what did you take from that speech last night? Because I haven't heard anyone, any pro-Israel people that thought it was a good speech. Besides Britt Hume, of course, over at the old uh, Fox. Yeah, it's unfortunate because I think a lot of of people who are looking for the president's support of Israel found it to be extremely supportive and moving in the right direction. Uh, To me, it was saying on the one hand, here's my podium speech. I support you, Israel. But at the same time, I'm going to be giving millions of dollars to Gaza, which the government is Hamas, to use right back into terrorism. So uh, it, it definitely fell short of truly giving Israel the support that it needs right now and standing unequivocally against uh, terrorism in all its forms. If you juxtapose this to the aftermath of 9-11, which he did, by the way, but he saw that as a negative, as a stain on our country's history, instead of looking at it as a positive, where we stood united and we stood firm and strong against extremism in any form. Jason, where is the outrage that there are 32 dead Americans and still 10 um hostages, American hostages being held. Where's the outrage uh, by the Biden administration? I hear a lot of, you know, sympathizing, a lot of heartfelt. I, I, does that, do these terrorists understand what they're speak, what Biden's speaking or they need to hear some tough talk? Yeah, look, great question. I agree with Lisa. I think your points are very valid. I was very complimentary towards President Biden over the last 10 or so days. I think he did a great job. But last night's speech was a total miss. I think that He was weak. I think he focused on too many issues. And I think he did not show the outrage that Americans should feel about the American hostages, about all the hostages, of course. And using U.S. taxpayer money for this, it's not our job. It's not our money. He should have been fully supportive of Israel, not talk about peace. This is hardly the time to talk about peace. And it's certainly not the time. And he certainly doesn't need to lecture Israel on how to conduct a war. Israel is a very moral and ethical army and knows what it's doing. Uh, Lisa, the IDF today, this is post speech today, puts out a, a, a memorandum. There's a serious escalation by Hezbollah, not Hamas, by Hezbollah, Lebanon coming down. Uh, Biden's speech didn't scare anyone off. It actually emboldened Hezbollah to join the fight with Hamas, apparently. Your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that for those of us who have been following foreign policy and reporting on it for about two decades, in my case, understand that this is American weakness. Our friends, being Israel in the in the region, and uh, our, our enemies alike are watching. And that's exactly what we're looking at. Three fronts within Israel. So we're looking at Hezbollah in the north, uh, Hamas in Gaza, West Bank as well. And three outside, we're looking at Iran's proxies, Yemen, Syria, and Iraq, where they have lined up their weapons. They have pointed them towards Israel and towards U.S. assets, by the way. But that is what President Biden is hoping to ignore. He's hoping that that part of this narrative, the part that connects this entire war to Iran's regime, will go away. He will try to ignore the proxies that are aiming at U.S. assets in the region, and he will just focus on Israel uh, fighting this war for the rest of us, taking out Hamas for the rest of us. Jason, final thought. I was hoping to hear a little bit more strong Strong talk aimed at Iran. I didn't hear it. And I think, is that possible, the reason why we're seeing so many other fronts opening up against Israel? Yeah, exactly right. The talk now needs to be Israel is doing what it needs to do, not just with Hamas, but America will be with Israel and our Gulf allies to take care of Iran, Hezbollah, anything that needs to be done to fight this extremism, this terrorism that puts American interests at risk or Israel's interests or our Gulf allies. We are here to stand with them. No ifs, ands or buts. And no sign of weakness whatsoever. I got to tell you, folks, um, this whole idea of Israel has the right to defend themselves is BS. You know why? They have a right to eradicate Hamas, not just defend themselves, to eliminate the constant threat. 
from Hamas and Hezbollah if they need to. And we should support that. Lisa Deftari, Jason Greenblatt. Thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. All right, folks, coming up.